Hi everyone, meteorologist Brian Bennett. Here's the very latest on the three tropical systems that we have brewing in the Atlantic Basin. I also wanted to take a quick minute to show you what this potential tropical storm is going to do to red tide that has been plaguing the west coast of Florida. All right, so all that over the next couple of minutes, let me go ahead and dive in here. First of all, we have potential tropical cyclone number seven, just north of Cuba. We have tropical storm Florence, and we have a tropical wave that could become a, another tropical storm or hurricane, and that is rolling off of Africa right now. First of all, here's a big view of the satellite across the Atlantic Basin. First of all, just north of Cuba, is the potential tropical cyclone it's moving off to the west northwest then way out in the atlantic ocean we have florence florence is right here actually looking pretty healthy on the infrared satellite imagery and then here's the next tropical wave rolling off of africa which could become another tropical storm so september is definitely heating up after an extremely quiet august in the atlantic basin all right, so here is potential tropical cyclone number seven, and it's expected to become a tropical depression on Sunday night and early Monday morning, and then by Monday afternoon, potentially a tropical storm. It's going to be named Tropical Storm Gordon if it can reach tropical storm status, which would be somewhere right around the Keys and then heading off to the northwest. There has been a tropical storm watch issued basically from Mobile, Alabama, down through coastal parts of Louisiana. And right now the storm is not expected to become anything stronger than a tropical storm. So basically a little bit of wind and uh, potentially quite a bit of rain for a few locations due to this tropical storm. But uh, not expected to reach hurricane strength, which is definitely good news. All right, here's a look at the infrared satellite imagery. And allow me to kind of just geek out real quick here. This is from the GOES East satellite, which if you follow, follow meteorology or weather, you may have heard of the GOES East. It's a brand new satellite. And what it's allowing us to view here is one minute satellite data. And right here is the southern tip of Florida and here are the Bahamas. But we're getting data updates every single minute from the satellite in space, which is more frequent than our radar data. Previous to the satellite, last year and the previous years before that, the most update, up to date data we were getting was 15 to 30 minutes old. So more up to date data means that the models can feed in more accurate data and give us a more precise result. So this is actually pretty cool here to be able to view one minute satellite imagery of this poten potential tropical cyclone, which you can see is kind of flaring up over parts of the Bahamas right now. Still well offshore of Florida though. All right, so where is the storm heading? And I'm only gonna show the European model for this. The European has been a rock star over the uh, <laughs> over the last couple of years, really, actually since Hurricane Sandy, and it's been handling this system really well also. So not even gonna take a look at the GFS or other models at this point. Also, this storm is not a, a major hurricane. It's gonna be threatening Florida. So just wanna take kind of a quick look here. So you can see the storm right there, just north of Cuba. The red's representing kind of heavy rainfall. Let's go into the future, into the crystal ball here. And here we are early Monday morning, and you can see that we're looking at some heavy downpours in Miami, in Miami and also over parts of the Keys. So very heavy rainfall for the Monday morning commute in parts of Miami. Fortunately, though, Labor Day, three-fourths of folks actually have the Labor Day holiday off. All right, so the storm progresses and goes farther to the northwest. It's going to make some heavy rainfall basically uh, over the Everglades, uh, mainly south of Alligator Alley. Fort Myers, Naples could see some heavy rain as well, maybe even as far north as the Venice area. Most of Tampa Bay, though, is not going to have a huge rainfall impact from this storm. In fact, on average, we're looking at about an inch of rain from most locations with a few heavier downpours from this developing tropical storm. But again, the heaviest rain is actually going to be near the core of the storm, which is going to be in South Florida. All right, so by Monday evening, Monday night, check this out. It's not even raining anymore over most of Florida. The storm has already exited into the Gulf of Mexico. So this is mainly a Monday morning and Monday afternoon event. 
and then it goes into the Gulf of Mexico, moves off to the northwest, strengthens a little bit, possibly becoming again uh, Tropical Storm Gordon once it exits the Florida Keys, and by then it's going to be producing some really heavy rainfall right around New Orleans, Mobile area, and either and even parts of southern Mississippi as well, and then rapidly dissolve once it moves on shore. But nonetheless. This is likely to become a tropical storm, so tropical storm conditions are going to be accompanying it, especially as it moves into New Orleans, Mississippi, and even parts of southern Alabama area. Not really a very big impact on Florida, other than the heavy rain that's going to occur in parts of southern Florida on Monday morning and early Monday afternoon. All right, what about the wind? This is kind of a cool feature here. I can show you the maximum winds that are expected to occur over the next two days or so over the next 48 hours as the storm moves off to the northwest. So you can see in Miami, we're probably going to have maximum winds right around 40 miles per hour, maybe a wind gust of 50, especially in the immediate coastal locations. Once you get on shore where we have a lot of friction, then the winds will die off quite a bit. And then again, immediate coastal locations or any wide open areas uh, by say over a lake like Lake Okeechobee will have a little bit stronger winds or even southern Pinellas County where you're having winds blow over unrestricted bay locations will have it a little bit more gusty winds. So once this gets offshore we'll have maximum winds here in the light green. Light green is about 42 knots which is about 50 miles per hour. Uh, so some gusty winds probably for the Sanibel area. Southern Pinellas County you're in the light blue here that's winds blowing about 30 knots, so about 35 miles per hour. So a little breezy as we head into, uh, into the morning, on Monday morning and even into Monday evening across uh, any open areas like Pinellas County, Sanibel, and again, southeastern Florida around Homestead and Miami locations. Storm goes off to the northwest, gives pretty windy conditions to parts of coastal Louisiana and southern Mississippi. Winds could blow sustained up to about 50 knots, which is about 57 miles per hour or so. So remaining in tropical storm status, the winds would need to reach sustained 74 miles per hour to be a hurricane. Not expecting that to happen, but nonetheless could bring down a few tree limbs in parts of coastal Louisiana and Mississippi, uh, but nothing that location hasn't seen before. All right, how much rain will we receive out of the system? Let's go into the future. Let me go ahead and drag this out to, uh, here we are. This is actually through Thursday morning. And you can see in the red color here, here's Florida right here. You can see in very southern Florida, we're looking at the possibility for about two to four inches spread across Miami over to just about Fort Myers area. The rest of the state on average picking up about about an inch of rain on average. Not to say that a little spiral rain band couldn't zip off the system and drop some more rain in a few locations, but for the most part, the heavier rain is going to be confined to very southern Florida. And then the storm tracks off to the northwest and brings parts of Louisiana and southern Mississippi. The grayish and purple color here, which is actually up around seven to eight inches of rain, so quite a bit of rain going to fall in parts of Louisiana, New Orleans, and southern Mississippi as the storm approaches that location. All right, so that's what's going on with the potential tropical system, which will eventually be called Gordon. But we also have Florence out in the Atlantic Ocean, and this is a track from the National Hurricane Center. Notice the little S's here. The S's represent a tropical storm and not a hurricane. The reason why is in this area right here, we actually have uh, relatively cool water temperatures which will prevent the storm from developing too much and then when the storm reaches this area in the northeastern Caribbean southwestern Atlantic then it's actually going to be encountering what's called a tut low a tropical upper tropospheric low and that actually has quite a bit of wind shear with it and that's going to prevent it from developing into a hurricane as well at least over the next five days now once it reaches a little bit farther west as it approaches uh, the basically the longitude of Bermuda. Then we're looking at more favorable conditions with relatively warm water and less wind shear. At this point, I wouldn't rule out the possibility that it could develop into a hurricane. There's also a lot of uncertainties with the track as well and something we'll have to pay attention to very closely. 
Here's a look at these spaghetti plots. These are all the different computer models that we have access to. And you can see over the next couple of days, we're looking at a decent model agreement. The system's going to move off to the west-northwest. But then what happens beyond five days? Does a storm head directly for the east coast of the United States, or does it make a turn to the north and stay east of Bermuda? Hoping that remains a storm for the fishes, but that is not a certainty right now. In fact, let's take a look at the European computer model run. This is the latest uh, run here. This is a 12Z from this morning, and I know this may look like Greek to you, but just kind of stay with me here. Uh, we're looking at the United States right here. Here's Florida. Here's the east coast of the United States. Here is Florence right here, represented by the counterclockwise wind, and here's Africa. All right, so let's go into the future, and... You can see the storm tracks off to the northwest, just like the National Hurricane Center had. You don't really notice any deep red colors representing that the storm is not really increasing in intensity very much. In fact, it may have been weakened a little bit. Our, our fingers crossed the system will actually dissolve. But right now, I have to assume that the system will not dissolve, that it will hang together. So... As it gets out of that zone of cooler waters and upper wind shear, it could actually strengthen once it reaches this area basically north of the Lesser Antilles. And then it's all about these high pressures that are dipping out of parts of northern Canada and the timing. Timing is crucial here. High pressures block systems from moving north. That's actually what happened with Hurricane Sandy many, not many years ago, but quite a few years ago, uh, back when I was actually living in New York City. But the storm... Right now, forecasted by the European computer model, has it such that these two high pressures, one right here over eastern Canada and one that's already moved into the Atlantic, blocks the system just enough where it could scrape parts of the mid-Atlantic area. And again, timing is everything. This low pressure here could end up pulling the system off to the northeast, barely touching land, or... If this high pressure kind of lags in this area, it could stay there long enough that it could make this potential hurricane make landfall somewhere in the east coast of the United States. Right now, not looking likely at all that it's going to have any impact on Florida. The positioning of the storm is already pretty far north, so pretty unlikely that the, this potential hurricane could have any impact on Florida. The east coast of the United States, though, will want to keep an eye out for the storm. Hopefully, though, it makes the turn off to the north and does not bother Bermuda. But a long way off, just kind of wanted to... to show you that briefly and time frame wise if this storm were to make a landfall in the eastern united states it would be right around september 11th which of course is the anniversary of hurricane irma us of course being in the peak of hurricane season all right so that's what's going on with florence we'll continue to monitor that i did also want to mention and remember that uh I mentioned off the coast of Africa, there's another system developing off a little tropical wave there well take your eyes back here to africa and notice that we actually have another little system developing. Uh, I don't want to call it little because it could become a tropical storm or a hurricane. This one actually is going to be at a little bit lower latitude. So that will have to be watched closely to make sure it doesn't set its eyes on Florida or, again, parts of the eastern United States. So that's a long, long way off. But this will want to be a system that we'll want to watch as well. And a lot of the path for that will be dependent on what happens with these high pressures as well. And that's not going to be it. We're going to continue to see tropical waves moving off of Africa, and those will need to be watched throughout the month of September. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, September is heating up. Things we'll need to watch over the coming weeks. All right, what has uh, been plaguing southwest Florida, though, is red tide. And I wanted to show you basically what can happen, any positive or negative effects from these developing tropical systems, or primarily uh, tropical storm gordon this is a satellite image from today and let's see let me bring out the little telestrator tool here and the water is so dark brown and murky from where red tide is occurring that you can actually see it from space so you can actually kind of outline the the red tide plume here you can kind of see that darker water i know a lot of you are probably watching this on your cell phone so it's probably difficult to kind of pick out the, the brown water. Uh, but bottom line here, this is Pinellas County. So here's St. Pete Beach. And right here is Clearwater. And over here is Tampa. And Sarasota is down here. And Venice is down here. And then if I move the map down a little bit, uh, you can actually, 
actually I'll have to stop this illustration, but uh, Sanibel and, uh, Cape, and Cape Coral farther south. But uh, bottom line is that's where the plume is right now. So if we have a wind blowing from east to west, there's something called Ekman, Ekman Dynamics. It will actually take that easterly wind and turn the water to the northeast. So we're actually looking at a bit of a northerly track of red tide over the next couple of over the next 48 hours due to what's going to ha happen with this tropical storm. So I made some little bullet points here and let me uh, go ahead and erase that uh, telestration for you. Uh, positive effects from developing tropical storm Gordon. Well, one would be that we're going to have choppy water out in the Atlantic Ocean. And when you have that type of mixing, it's going to help to disperse the the water and the red tide a little bit. So that's a bit of a positive effect from this developing tropical storm. A negative effect would be that the currents will actually be blowing the surface Carinia brevis, the red tide, to the northwest and bringing the somewhat polluted water into what's previously been somewhat pristine. And the area I'm referring to is primarily offshore of Pinellas County as the currents blow off to the northwest. So we could actually see Crania Brevis increase offshore of St. Pete Beach and Clearwater area as a result of this developing tropical storm. Another potentially negative impact is rainwater over the Gulf will not dilute Crania Brevis. Really, the, the, the rain will be somewhat negligible compared to how much water is in the Gulf of Mexico. So that's not going to play a factor. But rainwater does contain a pretty high concentration of nitrates, which is actually a nutrient for red tide. So the rainwater actually being a slight negative for uh, the red tide. And what will have little effect will be the rain over land. If we had a lot of rain over Lake Okeechobee and the watershed to the north uh, around the Kissimmee area, that would be a negative effect because it would drag more uh, nutrients from the cattle farms and from big sugar over land. But uh, not really looking at that much rain from Lake Okeechobee and north. So I think the rainfall will actually have pretty little effect on what's going to happen with the runoff into Lake Okeechobee, which eventually goes into the Atlantic and the Gulf. So the net effect, if you add everything together, is that Tropical Storm Gordon will actually have little effect or perhaps even a slightly positive effect by helping to disperse the water over the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, again, little effect, maybe a slight positive effect other than bringing the higher concentrations to the north. All right, guys, so that's what's happening with uh, the three tropical systems. Uh, nothing that looks very pressing or imminent at the moment. Uh, red tide, slight positive effect from this tropical storm possible is possible, but nothing that we really need just to totally break it up, uh, unfortunately. All right, guys, that's it for now. Hope you have a great and safe evening. If anything changes, I'll have another update uh, as soon as possible. Have a great day.